Hey, what's up guys? Zaya from Carnuba Detailing. Hoping you're all having a great day just like always. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about something super important. What is in this box and why is it so important? Before we jump into that, go ahead and make sure to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, and go ahead and comment below if you have any questions throughout the video. I'm more than happy to help out and answer them. But let's go ahead and jump straight in. Like I said, guys, what is in this box is very important, especially if you're a professional, someone's really, really getting into detailing and starting to detail other people's cars. This tool in this box only costs around $120, $150 for a decent model. Now, they can range anywhere from crappy to freaking amazing, and obviously the price changes as well on that scale. But what we got in this box today is a paint thickness gauge, okay? Now, the specific model I have is from E-Ray, 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 E-R-A-Y. You could find these on Amazon um, pretty easily. I think I picked mine up for about $139 off of Amazon a little bit over a year and a half ago, and I've been using it a lot, and it works pretty good as well. Now, Again, prices range on these things. It can go anywhere from 20 bucks off of eBay all the way up to a $3,000 paint thickness gauge. I can go ahead and measure everything from the amount of primer to the amount of base coat to the amount of clear coat you have completely separate from each other. Now, obviously, you're not going to get that type of tech or that type of... Um, awesomeness in a $150 tool, but you do get a good idea of how much paint you got going on on your customer's vehicle or your own personal vehicle. Now, we're going to go ahead and step outside in just one moment and check out a vehicle that me and the family purchased pretty recently. Um, excuse me. If you didn't know, my BMW E46, sadly, was totaled just a few weeks ago. So being the person I am liking Germany luxury sedans, we went ahead and picked up another one, a 2003 Mercedes E500. Now, it does have some troublesome areas, both mechanical and aesthetic, um, that we have to go ahead and address. But it is a perfect car and a perfect example on why you need something like this in your detailing arsenal. So let's go ahead, check out the car and jump straight in. All right, guys, so here she is, the 2003 Mercedes E500, 5-liter V8 underneath there, a little bit over 300 horsepower, around 300 pound-feet of torque. The color on this vehicle is called Desert Silver. Um, it looks kind of like a light, very light beige, looks silver in certain types of lighting, but we got the chrome rims on there, not too big of a fan of those, but they're growing on me. But one awesome thing about these rims are the tires. They are so freaking meaty, and it just looks badass from the rear end. Um, but let me bring you in on a couple of the troublesome areas and why we got this thing at such an amazing deal, mainly because of paint issues. Now, as you can see, we have heavy clear coat failure on the top part of the vehicle right there and also over here as well, and over here on the mirrors, and also a couple other areas and trim pieces around the vehicle. Now, what happened was, is this vehicle basically sat in a driveway in the Arizona sun for a bit over eight months to a year, and obviously, if you just leave a car out in the sun without any protection, especially a vehicle of this age, you're going to run into some paint failure issues down the road, and that's exactly what happened. Now, the headlights were completely shot when we purchased the vehicle, but as you can see, restored those, easy process. We all know how to do that. Um, but besides those areas, the car is in amazing condition. Um, mechanically and the interior and everything like that is pretty good as well. Now let me take you step by step on how to use this paint thickness gauge to your advantage. Remember guys, along your detailing journey of life, you will run into all types of vehicles. Vehicles that have been sitting outside for years, vehicles that have been garage kept, vehicles that you absolutely have no knowledge on, nor does the customer. So you want to make sure you take all the precautions ne necessary to save your ass at the end of the day. So all you got to do is go ahead and turn on the paint thickness gauge really easily easy just hit the power button it's gonna boot up just give it a few seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and jump in all right guys let's go ahead and start off with the hood real quick now this is kind of difficult you do want to make sure you keep the paint thickness gauge flat on the surface to get an accurate reading and just light pressure let's try that one more time all right that is our first reading 87.3 um, microns 
and again in the same location we're looking at around 88.2 microns. Now microns is a very very small measurement so any difference between like 1 to 0.5 is completely fine guys. Um, you're going to go ahead and grab an average of a panel and then go ahead on Google look at a, look up a conversion chart. I'll put, leave links in the description below and convert microns to mils just to make it easier on you and your customer as well because this is a very very small measurement. But we got 88.2 microns over here and then let's go ahead and look at this panel over here that has the failed clear coat looking at 50.1 51.5 as you can see there is a massive difference in paint from the hood to the area that we have paint failure over here and let me just bring you guys on to the Chevy HHR let's get a paint reading on that 158 142 see how big of a difference this is 144 this says almost double the paint the Mercedes has right now and that's exactly what the Sun does to a vehicle surface over a few years guys and this is exactly what I tell my customers clients anybody who I see spend their hard-earned money on their dream car or a used car or a car that they really want protect it protect your investments and they're gonna give back to you okay now when you convert those two measurements let's start with the 88 microns that we got on the hood when you convert that to mils you get around 3.46 mils now just a rule of thumb guys when you start hitting below 4 mils or 3.5 mils, you are getting very, very risky when it comes to any type of heavy paint correction, wet sanding, anything of that nature. And let me show you exactly why. If we go ahead and convert that 50 microns to mils, you get around 1.9 mils. So you only have about 1.5 mils left to spare between complete paint failure and an okay surface that you still can possibly work on. Now that 1.5 mils, you don't know if it is all clear coat or if it is partially clear coat and also base coat as well. So this is exactly why you wanna go ahead, gain an average of each one of these panels that you're gonna work on. And when I talk about each, I mean each single panel on the vehicle if you're doing anything more than a one-step correction. Now on this vehicle over here, guys, we are gonna get the roof the mirrors and all that stuff repainted to the OEM paint so we can go ahead and paint match and make it look awesome. After that point, we're going to let it cure and then we're going to go ahead and do the paint correction process on the vehicle. Now, when I go ahead and approach this vehicle with paint correction, it is more so of a paint enhancement to the max of one step. No more than that because I do have to remember that the rest of the vehicle has still seen some pretty, pretty heavy UV rays and damage. And I don't know, again, how much clear coat exactly I have left. Like I said before, there are tools out there that can go ahead and measure your, your base coat, your primer, and clear coat separately. Awesome tools, but very expensive as well. If it's within your budget, awesome, go ahead and pick one up. But this is still a great tool to go ahead and measure the average of each one of these panels. And I'll show you exactly how I start my measuring process when I'm doing anything like a two-step correction or any type of wet sanding on a vehicle. This process goes along with my stage two and stage three coating services because they do include a two-step and and plus meaning I wet sand and all that good stuff as well throughout the services to go ahead and attack some marring and scratching and things of that nature so let me show you how I do it so the first part of the vehicle I go ahead and measure just to get a base of what I got going on on the vehicle is the door jams now the door jams are going to be the thinnest paint on the vehicle hopefully the thinnest paint on the vehicle so it's going to give you a good average on what's going on so I go ahead and measure one of the door jams and then get a reading on that I measure around five to six times gain an average and that's going to be my average for the door jams on the vehicle after that guys I have a piece of paper very simple I do front right quarter panel hood front left quarter panel roof B pillars right door, right rear door, right rear quarter panel, etc., etc., etc. 
So we get about five to six readings on each one of the panels of the vehicle, find an average for those readings, and then find an average for the whole vehicle as well. Again, guys, this vehicle has a lot of H2. It's been outside in the sun. We already see a lot of damage, so the average is going to be very low. Again, a rule of thumb, anything below 3.5, you do not want to be doing any type of heavy correction. At least that's just my preference. Because remember, guys, I'm not just looking to make the car great. I want to make sure that car looks great for a very long time as well. I'd rather sacrifice um, a few mars and scratches on the surface and leave them be than completely degrade the surface of the clear coat, um, minimizing the durability and longevity of the paint itself leading to clear coat failure like you saw above on the vehicle. Now, some stuff that you might run into, maybe you have a vehicle that's pretty new, um, has been garage kept, but maybe it was handed off to a detailer that wasn't really good at what they're doing, and just that, they went ahead, chased after mooring, scratching, things of that nature, and completely pushed aside durability and longevity of the paint itself so you might run into some issues there that's why you want to make sure ask your customer have you ever gotten this detailed before if so was there any type of paint correction process that went on if so I would go ahead and measure it straight off the bat just after knowing those few pieces of information. I don't know how much that person has cut through the paint. I don't know if they wet sanded certain areas to remove marring and scratching. And I'm sure your customer doesn't know either at the end of the day. So it's better off. You go ahead, make sure, check, see how much paint you got on the surface. Um, use your own good judgment. You are the professional. You should know exactly what the limits are of the paint. Again, guys, my rule of thumb, 4, 3.5. I'm getting a bit low a bit risky I don't want to do too much paint correction on the surface now on average healthy clear coat you're looking anywhere above four uh, you can go ahead and work on um, but you rarely see super healthy clear coat nowadays guys clear coats getting so thin manufacturers are getting so cheap with their paint systems um, and it gets worse and worse every single year and that's why I recommend you apply a ceramic coating straight off the bat on your vehicle to add that extra durability and protection because you get these new cars straight out the factory they don't have much durability and protection to begin with so all right guys so really hope you enjoyed this video again it is a pretty affordable tool that's going to save your ass at the end of the day for around 150 bucks guys you're going to go ahead and be able to tell your customer how much paint they got on their vehicle how much longevity and durability that you got going on and also go ahead and and and, and foresee the future and make sure you don't burn through your customer's paint and stuff of that nature so um like i said the tool is pretty accurate if you know how to use it my biggest tip tip to you if you do purchase this exact one is make sure when you apply it on the surface this is completely clean the surface is completely clean and then also you're applying it completely flat to the surface i've noticed if you apply it at an angle or anything of that nature it's going to give you a pretty off reading so make sure it's completely flat when you apply it to the surface and you're pretty much set to go again guys take about five to six readings on each panel go around the whole vehicle find an average on each panel and then find an average for the vehicle as well i do this before a two-step correction and also after a two-step correction or any other wet sanding processes that I go through as well. Um, you will notice a difference in your readings and the averages after something like a two-step. Every Anything from 0 0.05 mils to 0 0.1 mils might be removed off of the surface, but if you do apply a quality ceramic coating to the surface, you just reapply that um, protection back on the surface something like inspiration you will notice a jump in thickness on the paint thickness gauge if you do use something like inspiration or nano resin from dr beasley's and stuff like that so um, it's amazing how much protection you can get from ceramic coatings and like i said guys clear coats getting thinner and thinner every single year from manufacturers paint quality is going down the drain from a lot of these manufacturers nowadays sadly it's all cost cutting so you want to make sure you go ahead and put that layer of protection on the surface as soon as you can so you don't run into issues like the Mercedes over here. Luckily, guys, I'm going to put some love and care into that Merc over there. I know exactly what I'm doing to go ahead and maintain the rest of the vehicle and enhance it to the best of my ability. 
on something like that with clear coat as damaged as that is and the level it is at with the paint thickness gauge, I'm not gonna do anything more than a one step correction and even that's gonna be pretty light as well. Right now, I just have bead maker on top of it. I've been throwing bead maker on it after every wash, but after we go ahead and get it repainted, polished out we're going to go ahead and coat it as well to add that protection so that paint will last as long as it can besides that guys again remember to hit that subscribe button if you gained any knowledge out of this video i want to make sure i bring you guys entertaining videos filled with education and knowledge um so you guys know exactly what you're doing when it comes to detailing I put a lot of time, money, and effort into what I do. It's a lifestyle, it's a passion, it's my career choice. As you can see, all the certifications behind me, the products and tools that I got going on. So whatever I can do to help you guys out to the best of my ability, I'll make it happen, all right? So make sure to hit that subscribe button again, hit the thumbs up. Any questions, comment below. All the links for the paint thickness gauge, all my recommended tools and products will be linked down below as well. And besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.